Take cover! Bring up the Piet! The Piet. It was a portable British anti-tank weapon from the Second World War. A rare thing on film. Made famous primarily from the movie A Bridge Too Far. Though it does pop up in a few other places. The Piet was an unusual weapon compared to German and American anti-tank weapons, in both looks and operation. The Piet did not fire rockets, rather its design was based on the spigot mortar. The British started World War II with only one infantry anti-tank option, the boys' anti-tank rifle, an absolute rarity on film, but it does show up in a brilliant training video that includes some funny Disney animation. The British anti-tank rifle wasn't overly popular, and only effective on thin armour, which was okay at the start of World War II, but the British needed something to combat mid and late war German armour. The Piet gave British infantry a fighting chance. The way the Piet guided its projectile was by using a long, spring-loaded rod. Projectiles needed to be aligned with this rod by carefully inserting them as shown here, using a guide ring. Most movies get this right, but some do not. A mild criticism though, within excellent productions such as Canal. Unlike anti-tank rockets, that were so common with other armies, Piet projectiles were launched in part by a spring, and primarily from a propellant cartridge charge. In many ways, the Piet has more in common with a rifle grenade than a bazooka. MG 42, 10 o'clock. Nail Fire! There were negatives and positives to the Piet design. The massive spring had to be manually cocked the first time it was fired, requiring about 90 kilograms or 200 pounds of force to do so. A total body procedure, with scenes such as this making it look far too easy. Tell him to go to hell. Cocking the weapon was only required for the first shot, as the propellant not only launched the projectile, but also gave off enough force to recock the massive spring, though if it failed to do so, this would need to be manually cocked again. Despite the spring absorbing some force, the weapon had considerable recoil. Come on, come on. Okay, the advantages of the Piet over a rocket launcher. Well, it could be fired in a confined space, without the risk of a backblast such as what you might experience from a Panzerfaust. This also meant it was safer to provide to untrained partisans. The Piet made less noise and gave off a small muzzle flash. This was useful, as though the weapon was sighted to 110 meters. It was really only accurate within 40 meters or so. A user would need to be both brave and stealthy. Do you really believe that any of that can be helped by a cup of tea? Couldn't hear it, sir. The real strength of the Piet was its shaped charge or heat warhead. Though the velocity of the Piet was incredibly slow, this made no difference. These warheads exploded on contact with enemy tanks and generated a concentrated high-velocity particle jet. The round from a Piet could penetrate up to four inches of armor, so it was a meaningful weapon against German tanks throughout the war. Alternatively, the weapon can also be used as a mortar to drop a warhead on a hardened position. As a mortar, the Piet could lob around up to 320 meters. You haven't forgotten my golf clubs, have you? Well, they'll be coming later in the staff car, sir. Though the Piet has been criticized by some weapon enthusiasts as being unrefined, it immediately filled a gap in infantry anti-tank weapons for the British and their allies. The weapon had its quirks, but it worked. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this quick brief on the Piet. As always, feel free to add anything on the subject in the comments section. And remember, I'm not a weapons or history expert. 
just a YouTuber and a war movie fan, so don't take everything you learn on YouTube too seriously.